the pigs have been out here and as soon as the weather broke look what they did to this pasture So this is the going to be the future kitchen garden. It's right outside our our front. It's actually kind of a side door, but uh, we've got a little garden shed here and a patio, and then a barns in the back. Uh, so this area kind of nestled between our detached garage, um, the pasture, and then our, our garden shed there is going to work perfect. Um, this gets a very good sun, and I'm going to do a whole video on uh, how to you know find your good best placement of, of a kitchen garden or, or any garden really but this gets pretty good sun for the majority of the day um, and so I think this is gonna work out uh, work out good for growing just about anything man was that a lot it's a lot of work scraping sod and making paths and putting wood chips in and all that kind of stuff um, great work I don't mind doing it but I think there might be a better way so these are our this is our, our barnyard that's what we call it this has been a multi-use place for all of our animals for this year. And we let the, the pigs have been out here and as soon as the weather broke, look what they did to this pasture or this area. <laughs> uh, if you remember what this used to look like when I put the fencing up in the fall last year, this was certainly greener in this barnyard. So. Uh, the pigs, the pigs have been a, uh, been little plows. They cleared this area out. They, they can root and dig and burrow up more ground than I've ever seen any animal do. They are diggers. And so we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can turn that kitchen garden area into this. So we've got this little side corral here that's, uh, kind of off the side of our barn junk hanging here that I have to get rid of that was here when we moved in. But uh, these guys have been kind of stuffed over here in the corner because we wanted to get them out of that barnyard for a little while until we, until we moved them to their final location. But these are our, our little rototillers. And they are ready. There's nothing for them to forage on in here so we've had to feed them a lot more. So we're gonna get them out into that uh, we're gonna get you guys out into some good green grass. I guess you guys are gonna love it. So I've scrounged a bunch of fence posts, metal metal posts from around the property. They're just laying all over the place out here from fencing various areas and stuff like that. So I've got a few of those. These are actually some worm buckets that have uh, some red wigglers that somebody gave us, gave us from their farm. And we've kept those alive. So the next thing we're gonna do is we have to basically fence in this little gap back here. We have to fence in around the sidewalk over here. And then this area that I'm standing in right here needs to get fenced off. So we wanna keep the pigs in this area right here and they will tear, they'll probably take two weeks so they'll tear this up. So we'll do a follow up and show you what they did. But let's get this little corral started here.
All right, it's getting a little dark. It's kind of a stormy, cloudy day here in Michigan. But we're, we're all fenced in. I ran out of fencing this last little section here. That's why I, was, I put chicken wire up. So the fencing isn't great. Uh, <laughs> and it's only temporary for probably two to three weeks, just depending on our, our average frost, last frost date. Um, that'll just, you know, it might be May 15th, May 20th. It depends on when I want to start putting stuff in the ground out here. But they're already rooting. He's already, or is that she? Yeah, that's, that's Martha, the girl. And look at her just tearing up, tearing up the ground. They dig their nose in about three or four inches every time they, they lift and just, just plow, they, they literally plow. And they'll eat the grass. They'll eat it all. So we made this little. We this this thing. The previous owners had like chickens or something in here, and they had like a little chicken coop thing attached to it. Uh, so that was just sitting out at the barn. So that'll be their little. They'll nest up in there. That's some old scratch or not old scratchy hay. It's just some scratchy kind of hay, but they'll make a nice little nest in there and sleep back here out of the rain. It's kind of under the eaves, so it should kind of keep them dry we'll maybe cut this little thing off but this will all be temporary beehives still back here hopefully they won't bother that we'll see what happens um, unless they start smelling honey they should be good but uh, look at all this nice green grass I have I have not cut this area on purpose so that they'll have lots to to eat and dig through and they're gonna love it in here. Well, it's the, the next morning here. And uh, they were busy last night. They uh, didn't, didn't go to sleep. They were, they were busy digging up here. So just uh, in a few hours last night, they tore up all this and most of that. Um, so they made some pretty good, pretty good damage just in a few hours. However, we woke up and couldn't find them. They weren't here. So it looks like they they got tired and were looking for their bed. And they looks like they got out underneath underneath here. But no worries, they didn't go far. They wandered right back to their pen and nested up in their little pile of straw and hay back here. So we locked them back in. Uh, I'm gonna fix the fencing up. I figured that might be an issue. So uh we're gonna use some tent stakes and stake it down real good along the, the wobbly parts there and, and uh, put them back in. Come on guys, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, he's going back, where are you going? The real problem with the fencing is, you can see how they nudged under right here. You know, I didn't have it put a puller on this or anything, but if you get the fencing nice and tight, usually you can go a pretty good span between posts, but I really should have had probably an extra two posts in here and get it wired down to the ground a little better, but it's all temporary and I don't have that many posts laying around. So I think some tent stakes will, some good, those good plastic tent stakes should maybe hold it down enough, we'll see. So you can see they just they just peel the sod back, look for little little things to eat. Their noses are, are really strong when the especially it's nice and soft out now. So it's it's been rainy over the last few days. So they're just they're just lifting the sod right out of here. They'll eat down this grass. <laughs> the 
this is Martha. She's a little older than than George, the other one. And I've seen her dig in as deep as I would say six inches at a time. So it's pretty amazing actually the, the work that they can do. Mess with the cat. He'll get you. These pigs are American guinea hogs, so they will um, forage almost for 99% of their diet um, if they're on good pasture with good place to, to graze and to root. Um, they do not need to be fed any grains or any additional food or anything like that uh, for the majority of the year. Um, they're very efficient at converting that little bit of, of bugs and roots and, and grasses and things like that that they get into you know fats and protein that they can use for energy and to store um, store for energy. So that's why we chose these pigs. They're a they're a very good uh, pasture breed, um, and uh, they do root. You know, American guinea hogs. I know a lot of people say they don't root as much. I mean, they definitely do. I, I know that. When they're out on on more pasture, they they don't root as much. They'll eat a lot of the foliage first, but uh, they definitely are gonna root up an area for for you. So, so that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for for this video. I'll I'll try to show some some pictures and video here at the end, uh, just of them tearing the place up and what it looks like over the next couple days. But uh, uh, I think this is gonna work out really good. I know. A concern that people are probably going to have is, well, pig manure, it can be dangerous. You don't want to, you know, use raw pig manure in, in a garden. Um, we're going to definitely take that into consideration. Uh, they're only going to be in here for two weeks, so there won't be an enormous amount of pig manure. Uh, we are going to still till up the soil a little bit by hand and, and sort things out. We are going to be adding some other, um, you know, soils as well. Uh, and before any vegetables are going to grow uh, that we're going to eat, you know, this will have months to compost so uh, I don't think that, they, that we'll have a problem with that but this one thing I've learned is there's a big difference between the mentality you know in the suburban setting to here uh, you know I, I picture this like a, an old farmhouse an old an old homestead you'd, you'd have pigs and chickens that wandering around the house and um, you know <laughs> these pigs are right up next to our house so anyone who comes over is gonna gonna see them they'll greet them probably as they come to the door so it's kind of a an interesting uh, interesting uh, experiment here but uh, I think this is going to work really good, you know. Um, that's what this is all about. This is what homesteading and, and being sustainable is all about, is using the tools that you have, using the animals to do the work for you. Um, pigs and chickens, uh, you know, can do an enormous amount of work. We'll probably put the pigs and chickens back in here at the end of the year, too, to uh, just tear this place back up and, and turn, return it back to, to good soil. So um, very, very useful little, little animals to have. But as always, guys, thanks for checking in uh, on the, the kitchen garden progress here at the SSL Family Farm. Uh, I'd love to have you guys follow along, so hit that subscribe button. Uh, thumbs up on the video. Please hit that thumbs up button. It makes a huge difference for us on the, each, each of these videos. And don't forget to hit that little bell next to the subscribe button. If you have not hit it already, head over to click on my name and head over to the channel page and hit that bell in the uh, upper right-hand corner under the, the uh, channel picture. Uh, that will allow you to get notifications when we, as we uh, release new content. So uh, make sure you stop by and do that if you haven't already. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.